Angie Callahan. Welcome to School Talk Monthly. In this program, we'll see clips from shows coming in January. Have a conversation with Williamsburg, Jane City County Superintendent Stephen Constantino. And find out who our Schools of the Month are. First, though, let's take a look at the live field trip coming in January from Colonial Williamsburg. Take him. The British practice of imprisonment has continued for years. For years, gentlemen. Gentlemen, there is no other way but war with Britain. That one. No, no. This Tecumseh seeks to form an alliance of tribes, and Britain seeks to aid him. I believe that I will be forced to fight the Americans. Forced? You are free to avoid war. And are we to continue to tolerate these attacks on our national honor? Can you see? The flag! The flag is still there! Do you see? Does Britain even recognize our independence? I know that. By the eternal! They shall not sleep on our soil. We will drive our enemies into the sea or die trying. The War of 1812 airs live Thursday, January 19th at 10 a.m. and again at 1 p.m. For more information on this live electronic field trip, go to history.org slash trips. We have two new professional development programs airing in January. On Wednesday, January 11th, the second installment of Best Practices airs at 1 p.m. This time, the focus is on object-based learning. To register for this free program, go to fcps.edu slash fairfaxnetworks slash index.html. On Sunday afternoon, January 15th, NetFiles is back, featuring great sites for photo editing, creating online flashbooks, and a place to go to get 100 free audiobooks. NetFiles also visits Victory Elementary School in Portsmouth, where third graders use the internet to develop map skills. Don't miss NetFiles, Sunday afternoon, January 15th at 2. You can also watch the show online at netfiles.org. Recently, Superintendent Stephen Constantino stopped in to talk about goals and successes in the Williamsburg James City County School Division. With me in the studio is Dr. Stephen Constantino. He is Superintendent of Williamsburg James City County Schools. Welcome to School Talk. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's talk a little bit about Williamsburg, James City, okay. City County. A lot of people, when they think of Williamsburg, think of Colonial Williamsburg. But the, the city and county is much more than just Colonial Williamsburg. Sure, so sure. Uh, talk, talk to us a little bit about the demographics of the school division. Well, it's a very interesting makeup of a school system. It's, it's a marriage of the city of Williamsburg and the county of James City. And uh, we are one of the few school districts that, uh, for example, has a school board where county representatives are elected and city representatives are appointed. So well, that's, that's a, interesting. That's a unique, yeah. it's a unique feature of the school system. So this unique marriage um, also uh, makes for a unique school system. Uh, it's, it's not a county school system. It's not a city school system. Uh, there's also, you know, certainly Colonial Williamsburg and all that Williamsburg has to offer. But James City County uh, is a growing uh, county. It's um, in all these these past uh, uh, 10 or 15 years has just boomed, and right. our enrollment has uh, continued to climb. We are at about 10,700 students right now, more or less. Uh, it's September, so that number keeps uh, keeps climbing a little bit. Uh, about two thirds of our students are Caucasian students. Uh, about 19% of our students are African American, and 15% of our students is the famous other category <laughs> right, with right. Uh, Hispanic students, Asian students, um, Pacific Islanders, Native Americans. Uh, just uh, so I think our county school system represents um, all of the different cultures and all the different faces. So even though uh, we are a smaller school system, uh, we are extremely diverse. Absolutely, absolutely. And I would say with the, with the growing numbers in pop school population, there have had to be new schools built. Absolutely. There are 15 schools uh, right now, and um, 
Uh, I remember when I first got here, people remember, I remember when we had one high school. We now have three. Uh -huh. uh, we uh, have nine elementary schools, three middle schools, three high schools. This year, we opened our newest elementary school, Blayton Elementary School, and our newest middle school, Hornsby Middle School, which are on a campus uh, side by side. So it's a really unique setting. I had the opportunity last spring to go to Hornsby oh, Middle, wonderful. and it's a beautiful campus it with is. the middle school and the elementary school there. And and we were in one of the uh, classrooms, and the students were using iPod touches, yep. and uh, that was uh, something I want to talk to you a little bit later sure. about. But I was sure. really inspired by how you're using mobile technology in the division. Well, we have to. I think uh, you know if we we can't ask students to come to school in the morning and power down. Uh, you know, we're going to have to embrace the fact that in, we are at the, at the verge of our textbooks uh, perhaps looking more like iPads and less like books. And I think that those of us who are not digital natives uh, <laughs> probably have to really embrace technology and understand that to engage our kids, uh, we are going to have to think of new ways. And technology is a big part of that. So what are some of the priorities you have in the, the division? I would assume that might be one of them. It certainly is. Technology is always a priority. Keeping up with technology and, and understanding the link between technology and student engagement, I think it's real important. Um, we have, right now, we're at a very interesting time. Uh, as, as the new superintendent, the school board uh, asked me to come in and launch basically a strategic planning process that we're looking at where do we want to be in five years? What do we look like in five years? What do we want to celebrate in five years? How do you define success in Williamsburg? So we are just beginning, as a matter of fact, we have our first meetings tomorrow. We're just beginning that project to engage our community so that our schools really are representative and reflective of what our community believes and so that in five years we can celebrate what it is we want to celebrate. So the strategic plan uh, that we're launching is, is a big initiative for this school year. In addition to that, uh, I have created a series of goals, objectives, and initiatives for the school division uh, to help us uh, continue to be successful, but also to work on areas where we have challenges. Probably the biggest area this year is literacy. Uh, we're looking at reading and literacy. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to do better in terms of grade level reading in grades three and grade six, and that's that's one of a number of things that uh, we're working on this year. So that challenge, which is a challenge in most school divisions. It is. Uh, what are some of the, the uh, plans you're putting in place to, to move that forward? Well, the first thing we're doing is looking at a uniform way to assess our reading skills. We, um, we have different ways of doing that in different schools, and, and what we need to do is, is make that more systemic so that we can say with a great deal of confidence, this is where we are. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one thing. The second thing we're looking at is a number of, of um, processes and programs and curriculum to help enhance our reading at the elementary school and then again in sixth mm -hmm. grade. So it's a, it's a two-pronged approach, understanding that assessment can lead us to better instruction and also simultaneously looking at how we can enhance our instruction as, instruction as well. That's great. That's great. And, and we know how important literacy is. It is. It's a, it's a building block. You know, if we know that if our kids can't read well, if they don't uh, comprehend well, that bleeds into everything they do. And we know also from research that if we don't have them reading on grade level by sixth grade, <clears throat> then our chances of success start to diminish more rapidly. So that's, that's a big goal for us. Right. Well, and, and I've read that third grade reading scores are, are what uh, states decide to build prison, uh, prisons on. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't like to read things like that. <laughs> I, I know. I, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's important. It's, yeah. it's an important yeah. piece, and, and we're focusing on it not because we are horribly bad. Mm -hmm. We're focusing on it because we believe that every child needs to read. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely, and will for the rest of their lives. Absolutely. Um, what about any other challenges uh, besides the literacy challenge? Well, I think we talked a little bit about technology, just keeping up with technology and um, looking at the resources and the finances. Certainly one of the biggest challenges that we have that every other school in the United States has are the budget challenges that we face. Um, you know, we're going into another budget year that doesn't look overly optimistic for us. And how do we maintain services? How do we make sure that our kids are getting the best education while money 
seems to continue to dry up. And so we have to be much more strategic and uh, much more careful as to how we spend the money that we have. So that, that's, that's a big challenge. I think the third, the third challenge that we have, and I don't know as this is a challenge, but this is a philosophy that I have brought to the school division that seems to be embraced. We'll see, time will tell. Um, I really believe that if we teach the curriculum richly and deeply and thoroughly and innovatively, that our test scores will take care of themselves. And what I'd like to see us progress toward is less of uh, a reliance on testing and practice testing and practicing the practice test and doing the mock practice test <laughs> and more on allowing our teachers just to teach. Um, I've said to our staff, uh, teach the curriculum well and the test scores will take care of themselves. So we are launching um, an assessment uh, committee and an assessment program to look at how we assess our students. Um, sometimes I think we confuse assessment with testing. Mm -hmm. Those are two very different, uh, very different issues for us. And I think that our faculty will embrace the concept of being able to have a little bit more flexibility in their teaching. None of this is to say that we are going to be less accountable. It simply says, let's, let's take a look at the way we assess our kids, and is there a better way to determine whether or not they're mastering the standards that we need them to learn. Can you talk a little bit about, a little bit more about the difference between assessment and testing? Yeah, um, think of this, think of it this way. There's, there's two kinds of testing, not to turn this into a three hour graduate course, but <laughs> you know, we have formative assessment and summative assessment. Um, you know, an SOL test, for example, would be an example of a summative test. You take a, cor you, you take a course, at the end of that course, how did you do? Uh, uh, chapter tests, um, exams in January, anything that comes at the end of a period of instruction is a summative exam. And we call that, I call that assessment of learning. What have you learned? What I think we have to do is add formative assessment along the way, which I like to refer to as assessment for learning. How do we know what we taught this week was, uh, was captured by our kids? Sometimes if we wait four weeks, six weeks, or nine weeks, and we realize that something we thought that was going well didn't go well, now we're in trouble. Right. Now we have to go back, and now this is th that's where the remediation problems begin. And so if we can assess more formatively and less formally, I have to make sure I distinguish those two words, more formatively, less, formative, less formally, I think that we'll have a better handle on allowing our teachers to collaborate and say, hey, you know what, this week we decided to teach these two standards and they went well or they didn't go well or tomorrow I can change this, I can shore this up, I can reteach this. And I think at the end, when we're looking at a summative assessment, our kids will end up doing better. Absolutely. You know, I, I was once in a school where they were, it was an elementary school, they had been failing, um, they really needed to change things up, mm -hmm. and they were meeting almost on a daily basis with their, uh, there would be a second grade team that met on a daily basis, third grade teams, they were meeting and they were looking at what skills they taught in the classroom and looking at how the students did on the assessment that was given and then who was, who was getting it that day and who wasn't getting it and then what they needed to change going into their very next day. And exactly. yeah, it, exactly. was, it was daily assessment. Sure, and, and that daily assessment can happen. Um, I've seen teachers use little disks that are red on one side and green on the other. And uh, you know, who got it? Turn up the green side or turn up the red side? It's an immediate assessment. We're also seeing, let's tie technology into this conversation, we're seeing the use of response systems where students can hit, a, I call it a clicker, I'm sure there's a much more technological term for it, but immediately we see the results of how students have fared on what was taught that day. That's formative assessment. A teacher, uh, a ticket out the door, uh, I want you to do a problem and hand it to me on your way home. We have an instant assessment of did we did we capture what we needed that day? Did we get it? Or do we have to go back and try it a little bit differently? And I believe that our teachers are pretty creative. And when, when plan A doesn't work, 
every teacher I've ever met has a plan B, C, D, <laughs> E, F, and keeps and going so out. Forth. Yeah. Right, right. Well, you know, one of the things I noticed um, when I was in, um, I was in two of your middle schools, mm -hmm. and one was a science class and the other was a French class, and they were both using the iPod touches, mm -hmm. putting that technology in the hand of the child. And in the very large uh, middle school science class, it was larger than the, the French class was, but immediately you could see differentiation going on. Sure. Because these children, they were asked to watch three videos and, and answer, I think it was about 20 fill in the blank questions. Mm -hmm. And some of the kids, really quick, they were getting it really quick and filling, in, filling out their, their papers and then going on to their labs. Other ones, it took them two or three times to look through mm -hmm. the, the material, uh, and then, then they were able to answer the question. So I really think that the mobile technology and that sort of thing really is going to be helpful in differentiation for teachers. You're absolutely right, and let me build on that and say that one of the things that I believe, and we're, we're beginning conversations, I've, been, I've introduced a term that I'm not so sure everybody understands, but I think we do, and that is personalized learning. We are at the point, I believe, in education where we are gonna have to get better at personalizing learning for each, each student. Everybody learns differently, not, the old saying, everybody can learn, not in the same way, not on the same day. Where I think technology and the kind of technology that you saw helps us, it helps us do just that. It helps a student who can sail through it, sail through it, and then perhaps um, add to their learning, to enhance their learning, to go beyond what they were doing. And a student who needs more time, that student has that time, they have those resources, they still have that almost uh, uh, a built-in support system, built-in remediation, they can go back, they can do it again, and so all of those all of those opportunities with technology and other things help us to personalize learning. That's going to be a that's going to be a, a big focus for us as we move through the next few years because we have to capture kids and teach them where they are. So true, so mm -hmm. true. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, about your community. How does the community in Williamsburg, James City County, support the school? Oh wow, uh, I don't know where to begin. Let me say that one of the things that attracted me to uh, Williamsburg, James City County, is that the community is truly passionate about education. Um, our parents are engaged. Our, we have an active PTA uh, at every one of our schools, an active district council that I sit on, and these are folks that dedicate an inordinate amount of time uh, to our kids, uh, to our schools, to our teachers, to our principals. They're always there. What do you need? What can we do? Um, they lobby at the state level. They, they, they keep in touch with legislation and what's happening in education. This is a pretty, a really amazing group of people and I appreciate them very, very much. I think our parents in general, when we have open houses and back to school nights, the reports that I get and from what I've seen, these places are mobbed. So I, <laughs> we have a lot of good engagement. That is not to say that every family is engaged with our school and that certainly is something that we are gonna work on but we have a tremendous outpouring from our families. Now let's look at our community. We have uh, William and Mary, uh, which is a huge resource for us. We also have, as you know, as everyone knows probably, a large retirement community in Williamsburg. A lot of folks come mm -hmm. to Williamsburg to retire. Mm -hmm. And these are folks who, as I say, were somebody when they were working. These are corporate CEOs and high-ranking military officials that have a great deal to offer us, and so we have tutoring uh, programs, we have neighborhoods that have adopted schools, oh, uh, we have business and community partnerships that are growing each day, and everywhere I turn, uh, literally somebody says, you know, I want to help the schools, how can I do it? And so our problem is, is trying to keep everybody busy and trying to, you know, and, and creating something that is tangible for folks to do so that it's meaningful and relevant to them. But uh, I just feel as though that we have uh, a wealth of resources and we probably haven't tapped into them nearly as much as we could. Oh, that's so wonderful that you have people that want to give back. And you mentioned William and Mary, and I know Colonial Williamsburg, uh, you, you all are testing one of their um, new, uh, the uh, Idea of America, yes. I believe it is. Yes. Uh, which sounds excellent. I've just learned of it myself, and uh, we'll be interested to watch how that uh, how that plays out. But I understand it is a fabulous online curriculum. The reports that I'm the reports that I'm getting are are people love it. It's interesting because that decision was in the works prior to my arrival, 
and the final decision happened, I think within the first three days I was in Williamsburg. <laughs> and I really, um, when somebody briefed me, I remember saying, well, that's just a no-brainer. Why wouldn't we do that? Yeah. Uh, here we are right in the, in, the back, uh, in the backyard of Colonial Williamsburg, and we have this tremendous resource. So uh, I'm looking forward to great things with that program and the future. I think we are so lucky uh, to have something like Colonial Williamsburg that sits right there. And, and I have met with numerous representatives, and they are just so interested in our success. And that... Uh, that's a great. That's a great help to us. It's a great resource it right there. It certainly is. <laughs> Can't beat a Colonial Williamsburg and William and Mary. Those are a couple of good uh, those partners are, yeah, to those, have. Those, those, those are pretty good partners. Right. Absolutely. And I know that over the years, William and Mary has supported lots of different teacher training um, uh, activities in your division and There's all a, sorts of activities. Oh my gosh! The teacher training, the professional learning, the the uh, the CERN conferences, the uh, School University Resource Network, uh, the I'm sorry, Research Network. Um, it just goes on and on. I just met with the dean and her staff last week about how we can enhance what we're doing and the future of our partnerships and things that we can do to help each other. So it's a, it's a wonderful relationship that we enjoy. It's a win-win for everybody it because is. the college has the students right there sure. that they can they can try their the the uh, the different learning activities they're developing and the teachers and for the teachers as well and oh, yeah. then Colonial Williamsburg too. So oh, yeah. congratulations on that. It's a classic win-win yes. for us. Yeah, Absolutely. For both of us, I hope. Anything else you would like to add? I think I've gone uh, through my list of questions. Well, I I I'd like everyone to know that that the Williamsburg James City County School System um, is an excellent school system. You know, fully accredited by the state of Virginia, accredited by the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools. Uh, great families, a great community to live in, uh, and it's a and it's just a tremendous school system. Most important to us, as I mentioned earlier, is our future. We are very much looking over the horizon and where do we want to go and where do we want to be. And we're starting a little mini campaign for our strategic plan, One Vision, One Word, Premier. Our school board, uh, prior to my arrival, set a very clear vision and mission for our school system. And the vision for the school system is to be the premier school system in the Commonwealth. And so we're taking that word premier and we're going to define what that means and what that looks like, and then we're going to attain it. Uh, so I hope that uh, all of the listeners and everybody associated with our school system will step up and help us uh, because we do want to be reflective of everyone's attitude and opinion of what our school system should be. That is a, a, a very admirable goal, and I will be watching and looking for Williamsburg, James City County to be the premier <laughs> school division in the Commonwealth. Well, we're going to work on it. Thanks Thank so much for coming Thank you by. very much. Appreciate it. If you've been thinking about learning how to teach online, sign up for the online teaching methodology course through Virginia's Community of Anytime Knowledge. This seven-week online course begins January 9th. The course counts for 60 recertification points. Registration is free, funded through the regional ARRA E2T2 grant. This is the last opportunity to use those grant funds for the course. Graduate credit is also available through James Madison University for $90 per credit hour. Go to anytimeknowledge.org for more information. Now it's time to recognize our schools of the month. At Catherine Elementary in Southampton County, students and teachers are benefiting from the generosity of their community. At a faculty meeting, Walmart representatives surprised teachers with bags of school supplies and Walmart gift cards to show their appreciation. Also, Capron's library's Nooked on Reading project was recently funded by Horace Mann Insurance Company, and students are now excited about reading ebooks with this new technology. For combining forces with the local community to support learning, we congratulate Kefren, our elementary school of the month. English teachers at Pocosin Middle School participated in Jumpstart's Read for the Record campaign to close the early childhood achievement gap. The campaign's goal was to set a world reading record by reading the same book on the same day to children around the world. This year's book was Llama Llama Red Pajama, and over 500 Pocosin students joined in. 
for helping break the world record and demanding that all children receive a quality early education, we honor Pocosin, our middle school of the month. Part of the vision statement at Franklin High School is to provide a safe and positive learning environment for all students. The staff and students have been working hard to fulfill that vision by starting an anti-bullying initiative. Students led discussions on the effects of bullying, cyberbullying, and its consequences. They also held a contest and signed a pledge to end bullying behaviors. For preparing students to become responsible citizens, we salute Franklin, our high school of the month. Walsingham Academy in Williamsburg has partnered with Pyramid Roofing to go green this year. As part of their From Rooftop to Classroom program, Pyramid donated and installed a solar panel system, which will be a source of both energy and education for Walsingham. The system will offset their power usage and students will have computer access to learn about their energy usage and track it long term. For getting students excited about important renewable resources, we applaud Walsingham, our independent school of the month. WHRO has been selected as a community hub for the Corporation for Public Broadcasting National Initiative to improve on-time graduation rates. We are providing resources and services to raise awareness and working directly with teachers, students, parents, mentors, volunteers, and leaders. Here's more. Good evening. I'm Gwen Eiffel of the PBS NewsHour and Washington Week. 72%, that's the percentage of U.S. high school students who actually manage to graduate. The rest drop out. What happens year after year to the rest of them? What are we as a country losing by losing them? And what can we do about it? We are here tonight to talk about the costs of losing high school graduates and the benefits of helping them find their way to a diploma. St. Louis is one of many communities across the country that has joined a significant national initiative to keep these students in school. Welcome to American Graduate, Let's Make It Happen, a multi-year commitment being undertaken by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. We're bringing together the people, the organizations, and the resources to improve graduation rates. Success won't happen right away, but in St. Louis, it starts tonight. Who better to start this conversation than the people on the front lines, our teachers. Tonight on the Nine Network, a teacher town hall meeting. American graduate teacher town halls are funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and are part of American Graduate Let's Make It Happen, a public media initiative made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. On March 28th, as part of WHRO's American Graduate Let's Make It Happen initiative, we will be streaming a teacher town hall live from right here in our studio. If you are a teacher who would like to be part of the studio audience for the teacher town hall, please contact project manager Kelly Jackson at 757-889-9415 or via email kelly.jackson at whro.org. This program and all the links we talk about are available online at schooltalk.org. Well, that's all for now. Happy holidays from all of us here at WHRO. See you next time on School Talk.